Hey, what's up? Robert here coming at you with another Photoshop tutorial and in this tutorial I'm going to be showing you how to clone yourself. So here I took four different images and dragged them into Photoshop. One thing you want to remember when you're taking these images is to make sure that they're on a tripod as well as the lighting doesn't change as much in between the different shots. For example, if you're outside and it's kind of cloudy you take a shot and it's cloudy and then you take another picture and it's sunny you're gonna have a little bit of problems making this look realistic because that's what we're aiming to do so I'm gonna go ahead and get started I have these four images opened up here in Photoshop so I'm gonna go ahead and pick my base image and I'm gonna choose this as my base image meaning I'm gonna drag all the other images into this so I'm gonna go ahead and go to this image click and drag it into this image then this image click and drag it in and don't worry about aligning it just yet we'll take care of that here soon and drag this and bring it in okay so now we should have four different layers and we want to align all of these photos so I'm gonna go ahead and hold shift and select all four of these layers then with the move tool selected I'm gonna go ahead and align it vertically as well as horizontally and now all four images are aligned just right now you can see we had slight movement in between each shot. Uh, you may not always get it perfect, but try to keep it the same. What I'm going to do is go ahead and only show the background. This is going to be our base image. Now you can take a picture without anybody in the shot at all and use that as your base image. But we're going to go ahead and use this one. And then I'm going to go ahead and reveal layer one while hiding the background. Let me hide the background. And I'm going to add a layer mask to this layer one. So I'm going to come down here and add this layer mask. Now you can see we have this white here. I'm going to go to the brush tool, select a nice size brush, a little bit bigger, and a hardness at 0%, very soft. And make sure that the foreground color is set to black. And we're just going to kind of erase around his body here. It doesn't have to be perfect just yet and we can fine tune this later on. Now the reason why we're using the mask is so that in case we go a little bit too far we can always swap this out to white and then bring that back in. Now that I have the outline around him I'm going to go ahead and increase the brush size and just take care of the rest. Alright now I'm going to go ahead and hide this layer and show the next layer. And I'm going to do the same thing, add a layer mask, go to the brush tool, and just kind of go around them. All right, now the final layer, add a layer mask, and go around them as well. And remember the left and right bracket keys can resize your brush and if you hold down shift while using those left and right bracket keys you'll uh, increase and decrease the hardness all right so now let's reveal all these layers see what's happening okay he's missing his head here and part of his arm so what we're gonna do is gonna I'm actually gonna arrange this top layer in the middle here so that his head is over this and I'm going to go to this image here, control click on that so it brings up the layer. Zoom in here, select the mask, get a brush, bring that down, and just fix it up here a little bit. And you can always get way in there if you want to get as detailed as possible. Alright, and now let's do the same with this layer over here. You can control click on it as long as you're on the move tool to select the layer. Then go back to the brush, select the mask, and paint that in. Alright, so there we go. We merged all these images together into one, making it look like a bunch of his clones are playing this game. Now this is just one example. Here's another example I took a picture of him in front of a white wall, cut him out, and duplicated him a bunch of times, came out with this, and as long as you're using a smart object, 
you can go ahead and double click the source thumbnail and edit that smart object. So let's say I want to remove some of that white since the selection isn't that good. I'm going to go ahead and go to the eraser tool and just kind of erase out this white. Hide that background, close out of this, save, and all the changes take effect. So you can have as many duplicates as you want. As long as they're all smart objects, you can edit every single one just by using the source. And then you can add this anywhere you want, make them look like a zombie, and make it look like it's a bunch of zombies coming at you. All clone zombies. So there you have it. Here are a couple more pictures I've cloned to give you some ideas such as this high five and an outdoor shot. Hopefully you found this useful and can use it in some of your future Photoshop projects that you may be doing. You can really take advantage of cloning when you're using photos because you can overlap things and manipulate things to make them look real such as this high five. Remember you can always visit the site robertsproductions.net where we include many of these tutorials that you see here as well as different blog posts and resources such as YouTube backgrounds. You can also follow me on Twitter at Rob's Productions and even visit the Facebook page facebook.com slash Robert's Productions where you too can post all of your cloned photos that you've created. And be sure to subscribe to us right here on YouTube where we release free weekly tutorials just like this one not only in Photoshop but in After Effects and Sony Vegas. Again, I hope this helped. Thank you for watching, and until next time, take care.